So let's look at culture. As the world grows smaller, cultural expectations and tolerances for the views as well as culture of others becomes increasingly important for our collective well-being. Culture refers to the knowledge, the language, values, customs, and the material objects that we pass on from one person to the next and from one generation uh, to the next. The next two weeks, we're going to explore what culture is and how and what influences culture to change in our own time and over geographies. So week three, culture and society in a changing world. And we're going to explore components of culture. In week four, we're going to look at technology, uh, cultural change, and diversity. And we'll explore sociological analysis of culture and culture in the future. Now remember, when we do defining culture, remember that society is a large social grouping that occupies the same geographic territory and is subject to the same political authority and dominant cultural expectations. And what we're going to look at would be, what is culture then? So beyond instinct and biological drives, culture is learned. And it's a learned phenomenon. Now another definition would be that the common denominator that makes the actions of individuals intelligible in a group, and we are a combination of nature or biology and nurture the social environment. Therefore, culture is the knowledge, language, values, customs, and material objects that are passed on from one person uh, to another and from one generation to the next in a human group or society. Now, shelter is a universal type of material culture, but it comes in a wide variety of shapes and forms. What might, um, for some, what might some, uh, for some of the reasons be, sorry, what might be some of the reasons for the similarities and the differences you see across cultural examples? We'll begin with material culture. It's all the physical or tangible uh, creations that members of a society make, use, and share. Now technology and its association with material culture is the knowledge and techniques and the tools that make it possible for people to transform resources into usable forms and the knowledge and skills required to use them after they have been developed. Now, contradictorily or alternatively is non-material culture. And this is the abstract, intangible human creations of society that influence people's behaviors. Now, non-material culture includes language, beliefs, values, rules of behavior, for example, the way we greet um, a handshake and the way that handshakes might vary across cultures, the gender rules in terms of masculinity and femininity, laws, family patterns and marriages and how we have marriages, the political system, the democratic or dictator, for example, faith in terms of religion or non-religion or other systems. These are all falling under non-material culture. So let's look at some of the components of culture beginning with symbols. Now symbols, these are anything that has meaningful representation of something else. Now, symbols can, um, are there anything that has, that meaningfully, sorry, meaningfully represents another meaning? So, the Canadian flag versus the American flag has different meanings in terms of what the people of those countries think of them and what the people of other countries think of them. So, symbols can function to produce loyalty, animosity, love, or hate. So, for example, here are some symbols that mean things. You know, we see a heart, we think love. We see a dove, we think peace. We see a swastika, we might think hate. An emergency siren for an emergency. Anger and hostility might be the raised middle finger. And the colors blue and pink often mean boy and girl. Now that's only, some of these may only apply in our culture. They may not necessarily apply in another. The key is that there are, there may be you know, one symbol, but it has been interpreted differently by various cultures. Media has an influence. The commercials for beer, for example, clothing, cosmetics, medications depicted, um, depict who their market is 
and what it is they w want to have considered desirable. So when you watch commercials and look at ads, consider who is, who is it they're speaking to and what is it that they try to communicate as being valuable and what's a symbol that's worthy of assigning yourself to. When we think in terms of symbols, we can also look at language. Now, language, it's a set of symbols that express ideas and enable people to think and to communicate with one another. Now, the sharing of stories provides society, a social reality, sorry, and shared um, past. So you can check the video that I've posted in week three on body language, which gives you an idea. Now, there's two kinds. There's verbal and nonverbal. Nonverbal, such as the written language, gestures, uh, tone of voice. And when we look at, you know, nonverbal, it's far more comprehensive than we might first think. Cadence, the speed in which you speak, are all part of nonverbal. Now, another cultural component is values. Values are collective ideas about what's right and wrong, good or bad, um, desirable, undesirable in a particular culture. Now, for example, good health, intelligence, knowledge, freedom, these are things that are considered values. They're commonly held values to hold societies together as well as to set them apart. Now, in Canada, there's similarities and differences between Quebec, Newfoundland, Alberta, similar and yet they're different. They hold slightly to you know, values. Now, the elements of values are criteria by which um, we evaluate each other, objects and events. They are often in pairs of opposites, good and bad, uh, brave, cowardly, hardworking, lazy. Values are very general in orientation. Now, some of what we are uh, considered as Canadian core values, well, they include things like equity and fairness in democratic society, consultation and dialogue, accommodation and tolerance, support for diversity, compassion and generosity, Canada's natural beauty, Canada's world image, commitment to freedom, freedom peace and nonviolent uh, change. Now those are things that are considered to be Canadian values. We can add to this list on the third component of culture being norms. Norms are the established set of rules, um, standards, if you will, for behavior or of conduct. Norms encourage predictability, stability, and organization in a society. It's the glue that's, if you will, that holds society together. Now, marriage might be valued, norms tell us how to be a good husband or a good wife. Not smoking is a value. Good health, politeness, the norm would be where to smoke or smoking etiquette. Norms can be formal. Now these are the ones that are written down as laws and can be carried out by sanctions. Norms can also be informal, unwritten standards of behavior understood by people who share a common identity. There are enforced, um, norms can be enforced by sanctions, rewards for appropriate behavior, and punishments for inappropriate behavior. Norms can be described as folkways, mores, and laws. Now, folkways, these are informal norms for everyday customs that may be violated, that when they're violated might come up with some you know, not very serious consequences in a particular um, culture. For example, teeth brushing. It's not a law, but we generally highly value it. Kinds of clothing. Am I wearing shorts in the winter? Well, people will approach me and let me know that it's cold and should have a pair of pants on and am I crazy? Gestures, religious fastings, the uh, kinds of cars that we buy are all part of folkways. Mores are more strongly held norms with moral and ethical con um, connotations that may or not be violated with serious consequences in a particular culture. Now, sexual mor morality are known as taboos. Incest is considered one of the examples of taboos. Now, formal 
more formal examples of norms are laws. These are standardized norms that have been uh, en enacted by legislation and are enforced by formal sanctions. Now what you're seeing here on the last slide is just an overview. Um, just to give you um, an overview of just how these components of culture are related to one another. Values are what drive norms. Folkways, mores, and laws are forms of norms. And taboos are an extreme form of mores. I hope you've enjoyed this particular week. We'll pick up in week four, the second half of the chapter on culture. Good luck, everyone.